Hey, Killer Cam. Good How day, good day. How, How are, are you doing? Good to see that beautiful face of yours. Hey, it doesn't get any better than this in quarantine. Come on. It really doesn't. You look great. Okay, you want me to ask first? Sure. All right, this is a tough one. I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, first question. What is your the greatest accomplishment of your life? The greatest accomplishment in my life would be my two beautiful children. Oh, oh yes, yes. Both. And would you like to expand on that at all, or just just gonna keep it short there? Well, yeah, we can. We'll keep it short. <laughs> all right. I guess you're next then. What do you got for me? Um, for the first question that they uh, fired out here, we've got what would constitute a perfect day for you? A perfect day. Hmm. All right. So I'm going to start from the morning. So first, starting in the morning, I get to sleep in a little bit. Okay. Nothing too crazy. Like, you know, nine o'clock, maybe 10 o'clock. Okay. Nice, nice. Wake up, yeah, that would be nice, okay? So the kids are downstairs doing their own thing, get a little sleep in, some bacon and eggs in the morning. Excellent. Definitely a coffee, has to be a coffee, followed up by a coffee. And then if the weather's nice, go outside, probably shoot some hoops. Got to get the hoops in. Got to shoot some hoops. That's what we've been doing all quarantine. Nothing but basketball, ball till we fall. Ball till we fall. And then... As the day goes on, maybe maybe barbecue a nice steak. Nice oh. steak and yeah, a little baked potato maybe. Maybe Under some those. some seafood. I don't know. Something to add to that. A really nice dinner, you know. I'm obviously not eating well here, but this is the perfect day we're talking about, right? This is a cheat, perfect day. Cheat day. Cheat day. Perfect day. Okay, nice steak. And then uh, at nighttime, probably throw on some uh, NBA 2K, a little PlayStation. This Get the video games in for a little bit and then cap it off with probably a little bit of Netflix. I'm watching The Last Dance right now. Amazing documentary. So probably watch some type of documentary in bed by 11. Wake up for another great day the next day. How's that sound? That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. On top of that, I think my perfect day is pretty much exactly the same except for the Shooting hoops, <laughs> not so much shooting hoops. Maybe kicking the soccer ball around with my boys. There you go. That would that would be a beautiful thing, and and the and the hoops 2K and no, uh, we'd be playing the FIFA here at our house. Nice, nice. FIFA's <laughs> always a good good one. Yeah, yeah, but very similar, very similar. Love it. Okay, next question. Is it my turn? Yeah, it's my turn to ask a question. Yes, if you sir. had to give up your profession tomorrow and do something completely different, what would you do? What would I do if I had to give up my profession today and start new tomorrow? I know it's hard because you're so good at what you do now. And I have so much fun doing it. It's hard. Um, oh. It'd have to involve people. Like, if I could play sports, I would, but I think I'm past that prime. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's rewind. We can rewind if you want. Yeah, take it back. Um, so it would definitely involve people. Something to do with, uh, oh, I don't know. Maybe. Write books, maybe. Kick some soccer ball around, maybe retire. <laughs> there you go. Retirement sounds good. Can you guess what I would want to do? Um, maybe play professional basketball. Well, that would be nice, yeah. Yeah, but really nice. And maybe a little more realistic terms, I'd want to uh, probably open my own sneaker store. Oh, the sneaker store. Yeah. Oh, that would be nice. Have a brick and mortar, a little online presence, you know. Oh, yeah. Should have done it about 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. And then had your little shoe tryout area with a nice three-point spot so you could oh. test your shoes. Now you're thinking. Oh, beautiful. Maybe I'll do that. Beautiful. I got some time with quarantine. Maybe I should start planning that out. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a long summer. 
<laughs> it sure could be. All sure right. could be. <laughs> what do you got for me? Um, uh, the last question they're sending out here for you is, uh, why is soccer better than basketball? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not a real question. That's the actual it? question. I'm, I've been given it. Why is soccer better than basketball? And what better person to answer this question than someone that is skilled? <laughs> wow. Why is soccer better than basketball? Holy. Round one. Fight. So am I like, is this like a debate where you have to take a side where you don't agree with it, but you just try to have to, you know, make it up like you do agree with it? Is this what we're saying here? Or can I just re totally refute that question because I don't believe well, it? <laughs> It'd be like a leap of faith here, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll tell you one. I'll tell you one reason why soccer is better than basketball is because. I get way more nap time in during soccer games than I do during basketball games. So I'm always, thanks to soccer, I'm always well rested. Well, I'm kind of the same during basketball. I just turn it on <laughs> for the last three minutes. Okay, fair, fair. <laughs> I just sleep through the whole 90 minutes of soccer. It's great. An hour and a half of sleep. Woo, woo, woo. Love it. That's true. That's true. But what's this noise? Do, 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 do. Swish. Do, 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 do. Swish. <laughs> Is that me playing basketball? That's you playing basketball. <laughs> Sounds like an NBA game. Uh, if you look right. at it, though, how, look at look at all the basketball players that just love soccer, like Elijah Juan, Nash, Kobe. Who else you got? Serge Ibaka, yeah. Pascal yeah. Siakam. And look at Pascal look at all the soccer Pascal. players you see playing basketball in videos. That's true. Two great sports. Two great sports. Although I've, although soccer does have four billion fans. True. Um, I would like a soccer player's salary, that's for sure. Exactly. Exactly. Not that the NBAs are too bad, but soccer's but, yeah. are next level. Realistically, the, the best sport is the sport that you're playing. That's right. The one pushing you to be your best. Do what Come you on. love. There's got to be good to this for everything. <laughs> although, although in sports, being number one is key, and four billion fans say that's the number one sport. That's true. In Europe. In Europe. <laughs> and around the world. And anywhere other than North America. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the 825 million basketball fans, they're, they're cooking hard. <laughs> but sports are sports, and it makes everyone better. It brings people together. All right. All right. I agree. Um, okay. I've got, the, I got a good one. I got a good one for you. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Okay. Given the chance of Bowden or Banny, who would you rather, who would you want as a dinner guest and why? <laughs> well, let's see. I could. It's tough. Oh, that's going to be a tough one. Two, two great guests. Two, great two very opposite extremes. Two, one, I don't have to, you know, engage in conversation. They will come <laughs> come across with some. The other one, I might have to pry a little bit. Uh, yeah. You know, it's kind of like the two extremes. The mm -hmm. yin and the yang. Yeah. <laughs> kind of the bright lights that make our building beautiful <laughs> as bulldogs. Come on. Exactly. It's that kind of roundness, roundness that kids are looking for. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got to an answer. Well, you got to pick one. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go with Bowden for table manners. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Are you saying Banny wouldn't have good t table manners? We've had a few discussions. <laughs> Yeah, if you've ever been at the lunchroom in the lunchroom with uh, Mr. Bannister, you know all about that. <laughs> you would know all about that. Okay, so Mr. Bowden wins that. We <laughs> have yeah, proper etiquette over top. Oh. I would have to say, if I were to have to answer that question, I think I'd take Banny. 
And I love Mr. Bowden. He's one of my best friends at school. But uh, and I'd love to have him over for dinner too. But there's something about the stuff that Banny brings out. Oh, you know, it's beautiful. I, some of the things that the, his stories are just unbelievable. Even the email he sent today. You know, he asked, hmm. he asked something about a virtual earthquake with Outlook, and I was just like, hmm, no, I, I didn't experience that, but uh, now I'm thinking about it, I guess. Hey. So, Somebody. Danny, man, he is awesome. <laughs> he always keeps it fresh. Always fresh. Always, always fresh. Thought-provoking. Quick-witted. Very quick-witted. Love hearing from Banny. So, yeah, Banny would have been my choice. No offense, Bowden. <laughs> no offense, Banny. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the most inspiring teacher you've ever had? Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> okay. Um, I'm going to answer this in two levels. So, first of all, both my parents were teachers. Two shared um, one, too. <laughs> and I never actually had them in class, but... They both work their butts off all the time. My mom, like, you know, we complain about working hard now, but I remember being at home watching my mom, like, perfectly print out these overheads for her kids. Overhead notes, like, we're not typing them up on Word. You know, you're writing them on the overhead sheets by hand with these overhead pen mark or uh, markers. Yeah, markers. You know, she would just work, like, nonstop every night, so... That was my inspiration of why I got into it. Um, and my dad was a principal and he was always working too. And he just, you know, he's the type, reminded me of you, Cam, a little bit. Just loved to work with people, loved to work with the kids. So so those two were definitely my most uh, inspiring. But as far as a teacher that I actually had in school, um, in my OAC year, kids don't know about OAC, but it was grade 13. Yeah. Um, I had Mr. Padelic at John Paul II. Oh, yeah. um, and he's still teaching now. He was uh, just started teaching when, when he taught me. And he taught me um, uh, history. And uh, I ended up um, Following getting it. a degree, getting a degree in history and kind of changed the game. He was, he was that teacher that, that made it matter to me. He was that teacher that, uh, that made me want to learn more. So Mr. Padelic, shout out to Mr. Padelic. They call him Padelic. Shout out to Mr. Padelic. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Do you remember any of your teachers, Cam? Um, yes, that was as well. Um, I rem English teacher, Dr. Tucker. Mm. Uh, OACs. Um, he's the one that kind of, yeah, steered me into picking um, history and philosophy as a double degree. So it was like that guy who gives you the kick in the pants, but also lifts you up a bit. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. A yeah. weird, yeah. It was just one of those things where you couldn't explain it. It was just the respect you had for the guy, just because mm -hmm. he respected you as well. But it was just a a connection that I don't know. Yeah, you had to put in the work though, right? That and that's yeah. the thing I oh, remember yeah. about Mr. Padelic oh, yeah. is that's you know one. he wasn't just some softy, right? He was no. he was going to make you work, but if you did, you kind of earned the respect. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's a two-way street. You got to earn it. <laughs> got to earn it. And yes, make your work for it too. Makes makes you a better person. For sure. Pushes you, right? Definitely. Almost dangling a carrot out in front of you. That's oh, right. I want that. That's right. So yeah, and right. he, told me, he said the only person that's smarter than you is the person that read the book first. <laughs> Very true. That's a good one. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, so start reading kids that's right <laughs> get out there and read a couple of books just for fun make you smarter <laughs> i feel like we could start having some sort of like offshoot show about like philosophy with zabo and newell <laughs> <laughs> here i got i'll just reach Deep over my thought. library here and grab i got books with like <laughs> all over the place Deep thoughts. Man, I've done. Apple. I've had a lot of time for a lot of thinking. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of deep thoughts. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> sure, I think I might change my mind about Bowden coming over for dinner in case he comes <laughs> over <laughs> to, to talk about. Oh. Oh.
Oh, that's going to get edited. <laughs> that's awesome. I bet that's not going to get edited now. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Got to go. Break off. Break off. <laughs>